You don't know how whipped he is. My elder brother whipped him 2,000 years ago and rendered him powerless. Hallelujah. Jesus destroyed his works in his life. Went about destroying the works of the devil. But in his death, Hebrews declares, he destroyed him. That's a powerful statement. Somebody say, well, if he destroyed him, how come all this hell's going on? They haven't heard the good news that he called us to preach yet. That's why we go around doing what God called us to do, because they haven't heard the good news that God wants you delivered. He wants you set free. He wants you liberated. You don't have to be tied up. You don't have to die and go to hell. Tonight's your night of liberation. Tonight's your night to be set free by the power of the living God. Bow your heads. I'm not done, but I quit. I'm going to give an altar call. Don't anybody move. Ushers, help me. Lock the door. Ain't nobody leaving. Some of you ran out there to get a quick smoke. You're going to come down here tonight, and I'll set you free from that foul devil. When every head bowed, every eye closed, hear me. It's either heaven or hell. There is no purgatory. You're either saved or you're lost. You'll either make heaven your home or you'll split hell wide open. While your head's bowed, some years ago when I pastored a church back in Glassport, Pennsylvania, I fasted and prayed for seven days, 21 meals. The whole church did without. For one soul, a young girl, 17, 18 years of age, she said, Brother Shambach, could you get the church to pray for my, my brother? We lost mom and dad, they're gone, and I only have one brother, and he's not saved. He belongs to a black-jacketed motorcycle gang. I want him saved. I said, yes, we'll do it. And I announced it to the church, and we gave up 21 meals for that boy. I mean, turn the plate over for one soul. Sunday rolled around and there he sat. I couldn't wait to get to the altar call. I said, God's going to answer prayer. I gave the altar call. Nine people come running to get saved. But the boy we were fasting for, sitting back there, wouldn't move. And the lady playing the piano, I said, keep on singing. I went back, put my arm around him. I said, come on, son. He's weeping. You could tell the Holy Spirit was dealing with him. He said, not tonight, man. Some other time. He said, I'm only, I'm only young. I ain't even 17 yet. He said, I want to live a little bit. I said, brother, come on down to that altar. I gave up 21 meals for you. You're going to get saved tonight. You ain't guaranteed tomorrow. You're not even guaranteed tonight. The only time we're guaranteed is now is the accepted time. You don't put this off. Today is the day of salvation. I know you're here in camp meeting. Some of you are here that's not safe. Some of you used to be, but you're away from God. You watch every religious program there is, but you're still not safe. The Holy Ghost is dealing with you. That young lad broke away from me and said, I said not tonight, and he ran out. Three o'clock in the morning, I got a phone call. It was a young girl. She says, will you conduct my brother's funeral? I said, I didn't know you had another brother. She said, I don't. It's the one that was in church tonight. He had a date with 300 of his bike members. They were going down Route 51. Some of you know where it is. You come in from Pennsylvania. Riding from Elizabeth into Pittsburgh. 250, 300 of them on their motorcycles. Back in those days, the speed limit was 70 miles an hour. The Holy Spirit was still dealing with him. He was weeping. 
going 70 miles an hour down Route 51, hitting that cold air. They had a visor law in Pennsylvania. That cold air hitting that hot visor with those tears flowing on the inside. He lost control of the bike and hit the medium and went into the oncoming traffic. Here comes a big old tractor trailer loaded down with 80,000 pounds of steel coming out of one of the steel works. They floor it when they come down a hill to get enough speed to go up the next. If you're a trucker, you know what I'm talking about. His bike hit that 18 wheeler head on when it was coming down the hill. I don't know how fast he was going, but it buried the bike and that boy in the grill work of that 18 wheeler. Dead on impact. wept I couldn't go back to sleep I'm wondering when he was weeping we don't know this he could have been crying out to God God was dealing with him that night. I don't know that I said I will have this funeral this is the first funeral I ever conducted I didn't know how to conduct a funeral I went over to Duquesne Pennsylvania the mortician's place there was about 400 or 500. I'd, there was a whole gang of them. They had their black jackets on. They're smoking marijuana. And I had to walk through all that. And I got tipsy myself going through. And I went on the inside. Nobody was in there but the casket, closed casket. The mortician said, are you the preacher? I said, yes, sir. He said, let's get it over with so I can put him in the ground. I said, I'm the man of God here. I'm running this program, not you. You just put him in the ground. I come here to preach, and I'm gonna preach either out on that corner where those kids are, or they're gonna come in here. And I went out and introduced myself. I said, I'm the preacher. You come here to honor your friend that died? Where do you want it, outside or in? You come to pay your respects, and they all filed in. I grabbed that casket and yanked it down through the center. Come to think of it, maybe that's why I'm not pastoring anymore. I don't know how to bury folks. And I gave an altar call at that funeral. I slapped my hand on that casket and I said, I gave that boy 21 meal. Our whole church did. We fasted and prayed for his salvation. Last Sunday he was in church. I gave an altar call and he ran out of church and rejected God. He joined you all going down into Pittsburgh on Route 51 when he was buried in the grill work of an 18-wheeler. I said, his soul is in hell. Every one of them. How dare you? I said, this is one preacher that's not going to lie at a funeral. There's a whole lot of lying going on at funerals. Sometimes you're gonna want, want to walk up there to see whether it's the right man they're burying. And I said, I refuse to lie. I gave an altar call. And 150 of those kids came forward and knelt around that casket and gave their life to Christ. 150 of them. Somebody said to me, you mean to tell me now, Brother Shambach, that that one boy had to die to get 150 kids saved? I said, I got a better one than that. I know somebody that died 2,000 years ago in order that the whole world might be saved. He's giving you your opportunity. Now is the accepted time. Today's the day of salvation. Look at me, I don't care before I pray. I don't care how many times you try. I don't care how many times you fail. You that are watching this on television, dial the number on your screen. That's how you can come. People are waiting to pray with you right now. Don't, don't wait. Jesus is coming soon.
And I want to see you get under the wire before he comes. Jesus may be here before that program is aired. See, it's just being taped now. This ain't live. And when it's aired, Jesus could have already come. You've missed out. Don't you miss out on it, you that are here tonight or you that are watching. Dial a number on your screen. If you want my prayer, I'm going to count to three. Just one, two, and three. That's all. I'm not going to delay it. In 30 seconds, I'll be done. Three will be your signal. If you want my prayer, you want Christ to come into your life, you may be a backslider like I was when I was running from God. Listen, you can run, but you can't hide from it. You're here tonight. There's something within you crying out, but you have fears gripping your spirit. Don't you let any devil keep that hand down tonight. 30 seconds to eternity. Here's the first one. Get your hand ready. Remember your signal is three. Here's the first one. Run! Every head bowed, every eye closed in prayer. This is your night. Multitudes are being weighed in the balance and they're found wanting. This is your night for salvation. I know this is camp meeting. God has people here tonight he wants to see saved and born again. Don't put it off. 15 seconds, counting down. Here's the second one. Two! Get your hand ready. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. It's either heaven or hell. Hear me. God sends nobody to hell. We send ourselves by rejecting the only plan of salvation. I'm happy to be the one to tell you Mohammed's not the way. Buddha's not the way. Hari Hari Krishna is not the way. Jesus said, I am the way. The truth and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. Eight seconds. Where were you spending? It's your decision. It's your choice. Don't you let any devil in hell keep that hand down. Get your hand ready. Here in this building. Watching my television. Go to the phone now and dial that number. Quick. Jesus might come now. Tonight. Get your hand ready. Here's your signal. All over the building. Here it is. Three. Shoot it up. I see your hands being raised all over the place. Keep it up for a moment. While I circle this building, there's a lot of people here. I see your hand. See your hand. See your hand. See your hand. I see your hands over here. I see a lot of hands over here to my left, your right. Up in the balcony. Anybody there? Quick, quick, quick. Don't turn him aside. Now, every one of you that raised your hand, I want you to stand to your feet. I'm going to pray for you right there where you are. Quickly. Let God know you're not ashamed. All over this building. Thank you. That's beautiful. Thank you. All over the building. Stand where you are. We're going to pray for you right there. Now, God said this to me. He said, whatever you loose on earth, I'll loose in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth, I'll bind in heaven. I'm going to loose you from the clutches of the devil. Then I'm going to turn around and bind the devil. So he'll never be able to t attack you this way again. Everybody that's seated, keep your hands, uh, keep your eyes closed. You that are standing, you can put your hands down, but I just want you to stand. But in my spirit, I feel God's giving somebody a last call. Please. Please don't turn him away. You want in on this prayer quickly? Jump to your feet while I pray. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else quickly? Thank you, sir. Thank you. That thing lifted from me now. I believe God's got you. You foul devil, in the name of Jesus, I command you to take your filthy hands off of these people. These are God's property tonight. I command you, Satan, loose them and let them go. Everyone that's watching this on television, I break the chains that bind them. Then I turn around and bind the devil. Satan, I bind you. In order that you cannot torment these people this way again. This is their first day of eternal life. Christ is coming into their life. In Jesus' name. You that are standing, look at me. Jesus said, if you be ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. But he said, if you confess me before men, he said, I'll confess you. 
He's the great high priest. He said, I'm not ashamed of him, Brother Shambhat. Show him you're not. Get out of your seat and meet me right here. I'm going to pray for you here. Come on, everybody. We'll wait for you to come from the balcony. You're coming. Don't sit down. If you sit down, you're saying, Lord, Lord, I'm ashamed of you. Come right down here to the front. I've been coming to Jesus all over the building. All to thee, Lord. My blessed Savior. Sing it again. to pray with you. Sing it again. Feel God dealing with your spirit. Get into that aisle and come down here. You're going to have the greatest miracle in your life tonight. Oh, hallelujah. I'll guarantee you God will deliver you and set you free. Fill you with the Holy Ghost and use you in this last day harvest. This is your time. I surrender all. I surrender all. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I want everybody standing to your feet with me, please. You that are here in front of me, I want you to look at me. I have a secret belief. I don't put this out as doctrine, but I believe the first step you took to come down, God put a hook in your jaw, and he served notice on the devil and said, you can't have her anymore, she's mine now. He belongs to me now. Because your action speaks louder than the words you, you declare. This is going to be your first day of eternal life. Now listen. You done made the devil mad. Because he just lost the soul he thought he had. He's been banking on you to go to hell with him. And you just found a detour. And you're going to make heaven your home right now. <laughs> That's enough to make anybody holler. Yeah! Hallelujah! Now listen. Let me just sort of throw a warning out your way. Because you made the devil mad. He's waiting for you in the parking lot. But before you get to that parking lot, you're going to get filled with God and the Holy Ghost. And you're going to put that devil right under your feet when you get out there. Isn't that all right? Raise your right hand, will you please? Everybody. Let me say this to you, dear people, in front of me. You don't know what you started. Because you're getting saved now, God ain't going to quit until every member of your family gets saved. You don't know what you started. I mean, every member of your family. Say, yeah, but you don't know my husband. You don't know my wife. I mean, they all messed up. Yeah, but listen, I learned something a long time ago. God always saves the worst first. That'll make you feel good, won't it? If God can save me, he can save anybody. That's the way I look at it. Paul said I was the chiefest of sinners. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. I'm going to put some words in your mouth. Audience, say it for a loved one. Everybody say it out loud. Audience, 
want you to say it. You watching my television, I want you to say it in your home. Just repeat this prayer. Everybody say, Father. Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I come to you today. I come to you today. I come as a sinner. I come as a sinner. I confess my sin. I confess my sin. And I repent of my sin. I repent of my sin. Lord, that means I turn my back on sin. I made up my mind. I'm going to serve the Lord. And I'm going to make heaven my home. But Lord, I am weak. I confess this to you. I need help. So I invite you. By your spirit. Come into my life. Live in me. Walk and talk in me. Fill me with power. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. And use me in this last day revival. I believe with my heart. And I confess with my mouth. God raised Jesus from the dead. Lord, you said if I believe and confess that. You said, I'm saved. I am what God says I am. Devil, did you hear that? God said, I'm saved. Thank the Lord. I am saved. Right now. Put up both hands now while I pray for your family. Holy Ghost, sick them. Every member of the family, I send the word of God to them. Put a hook in their jaw and drag them to the bleeding side of Calvary. In Jesus' name, I pray. Everybody said amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come here, Pastor. I'll tell you folks, you know what? Every time I do this, I feel like I get saved all over again. Welcome to the family. Clap your hands, everybody, for your new family members that are here. Hallelujah. Now that you're a child of God, look at me. I'm only here one night. I've got to give it all to you. Now that you're a child of God, you've got to start eating a different kind of food. I thought that preacher was crazy. What kind of food I got to eat? Soul food. And I ain't talking about no black-eyed peas and cornbread. We, we eat that every day down there in Texas. I'm talking about this old book. You got to eat that every day. Read it. That's what you feed the spiritual man with. Just like you feed that spirit, uh, a physical body, you have to feed that spiritual body. And every time these church doors are open, some of you may have come from another city. Look at me. Don't go to the church of your choice. Because your choice might be one of them cold, dead refrigerators. When you're looking for a church, find one that's red hot. Where people are being saved and healed and delivered and filled with the Holy Ghost. And hear me, when you're in that church, Now that you're a child of God, pay your tithes. That means 10 cents out of every dollar you're ever blessed with belongs to God, and you're headed for a life of blessing. Now, if you live in this area, this is is the greatest church in this area. If I lived here, I'd be a member here. I'd pay my tithes here, but I pay my tithes in Tyler. This is Brother Parsley. Give him a hand of welcome, will you? He's not only a pastor. I mean, God's given him a ministry around the world preaching. On television, 94% of all the homes that are wired for television, he comes in that home. God bless you. Talk to these folks a little bit. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Tell R.W. Shambach what a blessing he was to you tonight. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I know firsthand there aren't five men in America brave enough to preach like that to this nation, and that's why the nation's in the shape that it's in. I salute you, sir, and honor you. 
with that tremendous word from the Lord. Now listen, listen, listen. When my wife and I gave birth to our first little baby girl, we didn't walk in there where the baby aquarium was and tell them just to pick out some parents and go home with them. Because look around you. Look around you right now. How many of you can recognize you're not in heaven yet? You just got started. The purpose of the local church is to make sure you make it all the way. So I'm not telling you to go home with just anybody. We've got room for you here if you're in this city. And if you're in another city, how many of you at the altar? This, this happens in, in my meetings all across America. How many of you at this altar are outside of the city of Columbus? Watch this. You see that? Being blessed. Came in here to these meetings. You're going to be a blessing to your city. Find a church where they scream and shout. Where they pray for the sick and cast out devils. That's the kind of church you're looking for. Hallelujah. You've received a card. We want you to fill that out. We want you to return to your seats right now. We want everybody else to be seated. We want everybody else to be seated. Praise the Lord. How many of you have either seen Brother R.W. Shambach on television or you have heard him on radio? He is getting ready to take one of the greatest steps of faith he's ever taken to launch out into television in a major way. Sheila, what do we pay on BET for a full hour? Fifteen thousand an hour. That's what BET costs us right now. Now he may be able to get a little better deal than that, but it's somewhere in that area. Fifteen thousand dollars an hour for one network. You see? But how many homes do they reach, Sheila? Six sixty four million homes on that one network. Sixty four million homes. So when you think of it in that regard. It's not much at all. I want you right now to take out your wallet. I want you to take out your checkbook. And I want us to give a, a tremendous offering to Brother R.W. Shambach. We had Dr. Oral Roberts with us on Sunday. And other than that, it's mainly these young fellows that are, and ladies that are doing this meeting this year. And I think we ought to honor. I've missed my pastor so bad this week, I can't describe it to you. I, I look around and see him everywhere I look. What I'd give to be able to give him just one more offering. What I'd give to be able just to shake his hand one more time and hug his neck and tell him what he means to my life. R.W. Schambach has blessed you for years and years and years and years and years and years and years by radio, by tent crusades, by great camp meetings, by television, whatever outlet he could find to preach the gospel. I want you to bless him tonight, not just for tonight, but for the blessing that he has been to your life. I want you to make out a check right now. I want you to make it payable to World Harvest Church or just put a WHC on it. And if your gift isn't big enough, we'll make it bigger. But if you'll listen to the Holy Spirit tonight, we'll bless this servant of the Lord as he is worthy to be blessed. And I want you to help him tonight. He hasn't asked for one thing in being here. Not one thing. And he would preach just like he did tonight for me because of the love that he has for me and for this church because of the love that he has for it. He'd do it if, if he had to pay us to let him do it. But World Harvest Church, and Brother Shambach, you tell me if this is the truth, has the reputation across America as being one of the greatest financial blessings to any ministry that comes to it. That is very true. And we, we will continue to do so. Because we believe God gives us the best and they need to be treated like the best. I want Brother Shambach when he opens that check to get one of those, what do you call it, Pentecostal spasms. I, I want him to get one of those. And I'm not shouting loud because I feel a reverence right now for the ministry gift that God has set in our midst tonight. I feel a respect and an honor for what God has set in our midst. And I want your gift tonight to honor him. So right now, make out that check and put a WHC on it. If you need an offering envelope there in the pew in front of you, just fill one of those out completely. 
Would you take your offering in your hand right now? If you've already got it ready, would you hold it up and wave it around? Look at somebody next to you and say, can't you do better than that? It's an amazing thing to me, Brother Shambach, it has always amazed me that people can sit right now at this point in the service and do nothing and do absolutely nothing. This man wants to take a tent into places like Fort Apache, the Bronx, in New York City. He wants to take an old gospel tent into places like South Central Los Angeles. He wants to take a tent into Detroit, Michigan. I don't know. I don't know. I can just tell you right now, these little whippersnapper boys preaching the gospel today, they don't have the guts nor the glory for that. But this is our general. This is a captain. This is one of our great men of faith. And we need to help him right now. I just feel that in my spirit that we need to help him. He's going to fight hell. He's not going someplace. He's not going someplace to have a prosperity seminar with all the folks that make a hundred grand or better a year and encourage them to give. He's going to the drug addicts and the prostitutes and the homosexuals and the AIDS patients. He's going into the jaws of death and grapple over the souls of lost humanity. And it's time the church helped him. I'm not going to get any more excited than that. We ought to help him. I want to help him. I want to help him. Joni and I are going to give a thousand dollars in this offering tonight just because the Holy Spirit spoke to me too. Just because the Holy Spirit spoke to me too. I believe in what this man is doing. Now, Father, touch the hearts of every person right now to give that which would be pleasing to you. Not give what they think they can, but what but give what they desire to keep. Lord, to break open and open heaven and let the blessing of God rain down upon them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shout hallelujah! hallelujah. The gentlemen are going to begin to wait on you right now. They're going to begin to pass those offering containers. Just go ahead and do that. Let me remind you, 10 o'clock in the morning, my mother will be preaching in this pulpit. 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, the open house at World Harvest Bible College. Then Friday morning at 10 o'clock, the Breakthrough Covenant Partner Anointing Service. That service is closed and open only to Breakthrough Covenant Partners. If you want to become a Breakthrough Covenant Partner, there's information in all the foyers about it. And just make yourself available to that. In Jesus' name. Stop by Brother Shambach's table. Get those wonderful books by A.A. A. Allen and all of the great material that's out there for you. And I know it'll be a blessing to you. Hallelujah. I got to tell you this, Brother Shambach frightened me a little bit tonight because he started off talking about Iwo Jima. And the Spirit of the Lord has given me an illustrated sermon tomorrow night called Raise the Standard. When those four soldiers climbed to the top of the summit of Mount Suribachi and proudly planted the American flag, that is our, that famed photograph of that moment is forever frozen in time. It's our most memorable image of World War II. And God spoke to me out of that image. And I'm going to preach it in this building tomorrow night. An illustrated sermon called Raise the Standard. It'll be a great blessing to you. Don't miss it. That's at 7 o'clock. Then Dr. Iona Locke, one of the most preaching machines you've ever seen in your life, is going to be in here on Thursday night. Bishop Jakes will be here on Friday night. And we're going to have a tremendous time in the Lord all week long. If the offering containers have already passed you, you may stand. Otherwise, you may remain seated until the offering containers have passed you. Everybody stretch your hands forward this way to Brother Shambach. I want you to begin to pray for those crusades right now. South Central Los Angeles, Detroit, Michigan, New York City. I want you to pray. The devil will do anything to keep him out of those cities. And in the name of... Father, in the name of your Christ, we release a supernatural anointing of the Holy Ghost upon Brother Shambach. Grant that with all boldness thy servant may declare your word and that signs and wonders will follow the preaching of the word. Let the greatest miracles that have ever transpired in the Shambach revival ministry begin to transpire in those great inner city meetings. Let the blind see, let the lame walk, let the deaf hear, let the dead be raised, send a revival and break the awful curse of Satan's power in Jesus' name. And everybody in agreement shouted hallelujah. Hallelujah! hallelujah.
Hallelujah. We'll see you in the morning at 10 o'clock. Blessed be the Lord, God Almighty, forever and ever. Blessed be, blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, God Almighty, forever.